Hey there, Josh Powers here with Quixel, and in today's Mixer tutorial, I'm going to quickly go through how to create a corrugated metal texture that will utilize surface blends, mask stacks, as well as a bit of mask painting. So let's begin. First I'm going to start with my base solid layer, and then I'll add another solid layer and give it a quick name. I want this layer to have a bit of a warmer hue to it, which I'll actually utilize as I add scan surfaces later on. I give the threshold a bump up to around 0.67 and leave the other settings as they are. Now I'm ready to add the mask stack. To achieve the corrugated panel look, I'm going to start with the checker pattern. I'll drop the repeat X to 1 and the repeat Y to 2. Next I'll add a position gradient to give a bit of a slope to the panel. First I'll set the blend to multiply, and then adjust the angle to negative 90 degrees. I'll change the upper level slider to 0.5 and then I'll drop down the opacity to around 0.44. Now I add another checker pattern component, and this time I'll set the repeat X to 18 and the repeat Y to 0. I set it to multiply and reduce the opacity to around 0.3. Adding a transform modifier and layer clipping it to the pattern below, I'll bump up the repetitions on the X to 3 and then the Y down to 0. And lastly I add a Gaussian blur that I also layer clip, and then set the strength quite low to a hair under 0.01. This gives it a subtle blur on all the edges. For the bottom panel, I add another solid layer and raise the threshold to 0.78. So instead of just duplicating the layer below to get a copy of the mask, I can actually just right click on the layer mask and copy the mask stack and then paste it to my new layer. This feature comes in handy quite a bit if I'm wanting to use a previously created mask of say a solid layer to be the foundation of a mask for a surface layer. To make things easier to see while I work on this layer, I'm going to disable the top panel's mask for now. For this panel, I just need to make some adjustments to a couple of the mask components and modifiers, and then add one new one. My first stop is on the position gradient, where I'll lower the opacity down to about 0.3. Then I max out the repeat X on the checker pattern above. For this panel, I want the extrusions to have a softer, almost cylindrical appearance, so I'll increase the strength of the blur a little bit. Then lastly, I add a transform modifier to the top. I adjust the offset X slightly, and then set the offset Y to 0.5 exactly so that it will place the height data on the bottom half of the texture. Now I reactivate the top sheet layer, and I can see that everything is looking pretty good. Okay, so I want to add some quick dents to the panel. I could achieve this with a mask stack, but using a Megascan surface will allow me to get real world accurate results in just a few seconds. I'll start off by raising the threshold to about 1.2. Reduce the opacity to 0.7 or so. Then max out wrap to base and eliminate remove base details. I also drop the low frequency a tad. And I then play with the offsets a little bit to position the dents where I want them. And then set the repetitions to 2. Since the dents on the surface are quite unique, tiling it twice does look a little odd, so I'm going to add a mask stack to help reduce the repetition. To do this, I'll simply use a Perlin noise and play with the different settings until I'm pretty happy with the outcome. I think this is looking okay for now, so I'll revisit this in a moment once I have the next layer added. Now I'm going to add the main surface layer by adding this disposable aluminum scan. Because I want this to cover the whole surface, I max out the threshold and then drop the opacity a little bit. Wrap to base gets set to 1 and remove base details to 0. I also max out both the high and low frequency settings. I set the diffuse color to a dark blue tinted color. And then drop the gloss down a little bit. Now that I can see the damage a little more clearly, I go back to the mask stack below and adjust the settings of the Perlin noise to mitigate the repetitive height data from showing through. I think that's looking much better. I also decided to adjust the diffuse color of the top sheet to make the reddish color come through a little more pronounced. Back on the main texture surface at the top of the stack, I will drop the repetitions down to 1. Ok, this is feeling pretty good so I'm ready to move on. Decals are a really fast and easy way to add some more character to your material, so I'll click on the decal button and add this leakage decal. I'll blend from below and raise the threshold to a little over 0.5. I also bump the radius up as well. And then reduce the opacity a little bit to help blend the decal into the layers beneath. 
I then set remove base details down to zero before playing with both the low and high frequency settings. And then I adjust the offsets and scale amount to make the decal larger and positioned at the top of the material. I want to add some rivets across both panels, so to do this I'm going to add a new surface layer. And I'm going to select this rusted metal sheet. I'll max out the threshold, and then raise wrap to base up pretty high, but not quite to 1. This will allow for the layer to have some depth, but for the most part it will conform to the height data beneath. And then I zero out remove base details before dropping the low frequency down a little bit. So I could go ahead and use a mask stack to create the rivets across the texture, but in this case it would actually be much faster to just paint the mask by hand. So I'll click on the paint mask button right next to the mask stack button. I'll first paint the layer black to make the layer invisible. Next, I'll adjust my brush settings. It took me just a few seconds of trial and error to figure out the settings I liked. I set the brush size to 1.8 and the opacity to 50. I select the soft round brush as my base brush and then lower the base curve down to 1. This gives me a nice dome looking effect. And for the top layer, I set the spacing to 412 so that each stroke will be on the extruded piece of the metal. I click on the camera toggle button to go inside an isometric top-down view, and then while holding down shift, click and drag across the surface. And voila, my rivets for the top panel are in place. Since the extrusions are a little bit tighter together on the bottom panel, I adjust the spacing down to 308, and then go back into perspective view so that I can more easily see the peaks of the metal. Once again, I line up my brush and then hold down shift and click drag across the surface. Okay, so the rivets are looking good, but I do want to add a little bit of height variation to each one so that they don't feel quite so uniform. So I duplicate the current layer and delete the layer mask. I layer clip to the rivet layer beneath and then blend from above. I drop the threshold to a little over 0.5. Now I'll add a mask stack and drop in a Perlin noise. As I tweak the settings, you'll notice some of the rivets drop down lower than the others. It's a very subtle effect, but subtlety is the key to making a believable material, so I like to add things like this where it makes sense. Alright, let's add a bit of rust to the panels. I click on the Add Surface Layer button and grab the same rusted metal sheet surface I used for the rivets. I blend from above and max out the threshold. I also max out the radius to give a nice soft edge blend. I then set wrap to base to 1 and drop the low frequency a bit. I add a mask stack to the layer and then use a curvature component. I leave samples and frequency alone and make some adjustments to the levels. I then add a Perlin noise on top of that and set it to multiply. After tweaking all the settings a little, I bring down the opacity to around 0.75. I then add a brightness and contrast modifier and bump up the brightness a tad. And I pull up the contrast just above 3 before lowering the opacity to around 0.45. You can now see how some of the rust is coming through on the edges of the top panel, as well as showing up nicely on the lower panel. Lastly, I add a solid layer for some grime. I blend from above and max out the threshold. I give it a very dark diffuse and set the gloss to nearly black. And I also set wrap to base to 1. I add a new mask stack to the layer and drop on another curvature. I invert the effect of the component and then set the range to 3 and the frequency to about 0.05. And then a quick levels adjustment. Hitting 2 on the keyboard to see the diffuse, you can notice the grime inside the cavities of the material. It almost has an ambient occlusion look that helps make the depth pop. Okay, so I'm just about finished, but I do feel like the decal we added earlier got a little bit lost with some of the other layers we added, so I quickly brighten up the diffuse a little and give it a more orangish tint. Alright, that's looking better. Now all that's left to do is export.
I hope this tutorial was helpful in demonstrating how you can easily and quickly create believable materials inside Quixel Mixer using a combination of height blending with the mask stack and even some mask painting. So be sure to stay tuned for more tutorials. And also be sure to post your own results of this tutorial and the forum linked in the description below. Thanks for watching.